we at eGrazzini feel that with the evolution of LEDs, it's opened up new markets and new challenges for us. So I think we've got to look at this as an extremely po positive opportunity. Obviously, most of the construction market within Europe is, is in recession. However, we've got the replacement market. Energy consumption is fundamental. Uh, it's at the forefront of most businesses. Cost saving is key. So LEDs give us that opportunity for new markets, for people to retrofit their traditional old lamp sources with the more modern LED sources. Some of the clients that we're working with, WH Smith, we're doing a bit for Monsoon, um, they're looking for LED lights, but there's a balance point around what the cost is, what the cost of maintenance and the cost to install. There's a big view on retrofit, so they're not doing a complete refurbishment, but they want to put light fittings into existing ceilings. The challenge is, you know, obviously to use LEDs, but also to maintain the look and feel of the restaurants and yeah, we want them to feel warm and inviting for our customers. Um, LED does provide us with some challenge in terms of being able to do that. I think we're just about being able to break that mould and get there with, with LEDs. We have been installing them now for yeah, probably a couple of years um, with, with, with different success. I think maintenance is still a big issue. I have great concerns about the longevity, five or six years forwards and how we're going to maintain the component parts of a light fitting that's no longer a lamp and a piece of metalwork. Future proofing is a massive issue. Um, standards and the ability to judge product on you know, the same playing field, with different manufacturers, and potentially you know, linking those two things together. So you've got future proofing on the one hand, that the ability to be able to use different manufacturers' products, LEDs, in uh, you know, third-party manufacturers' luminaires and knowing that that's all going to work and knowing that the performance criteria is set and is tested too. For our, from us perspective, I think standardisation is a key word, but what we do need is interchangeability. I think that's the key for a luminaire manufacturer is to have interchangeability of, of the chips. So uh, we can have a standard body and then if someone wanted a wide flood neutral right, right we just take the puck or the, the module and put it into the fixture. So we're going, to more, sorry, we're going back more towards the traditional lamp sources. And we need to select the right they say a solution for the right application according to one technology that is not stable. So we need to have a clear understanding which will be the roadmap in terms of efficiency, in terms of color rendering and so on, uh, in order to select uh, the best, let's say, uh, suppliers uh, in order to put together you know, uh, our package and so on. This, I think, is, a, is one of the big issues. I think the conversation today was very good about standards, about trying to maintain some uh, even playing field whereby we can judge one, one product against another. But what has to happen is that the industry as a whole needs to try and act as a whole. So that standards are important, but also what are we trying to achieve as well? So can we try and get some way in which the lighting codes, I talked about the lighting codes, trying to get quality as well as quantity covered. Lux as well as candelas per square meter is a useful thing. Warranty is a key issue in LEDs. We're talking 50,000 hours life, therefore we need to make sure that the product has a warranty that is in line with the life cycle of the product. Um, so it's very important, I think, that manufacturers back up their comments and statements and figures with factual warranties because that gives confidence to the specifier. I think there's a real chance for us to learn from some of the good practice that's done in the US marketplace with uh, Energy Star UL certification and the standards that they put in place that are across the board uh, well understood by uh, specifiers and manufacturers. I, I was working in the States um, some years ago um, in the early days of sort of energy efficiency and everything else within you know, the, the lighting industry out there. And I remember looking at, the, they were, had a great deal of concern, this particular um, auction house it was, um, about the, the energy they were using. And when I looked at the window, there were you know, an excessive amount of 100 watt or 150 watt par 38 fixtures, of course, burning vast amounts of energy. Um, and it was it. But of course, now they've got this energy star, which I, th I, th I think I totally agree with what's been discussed today is that should be adopted to, into Europe and into the UK, because I think it is a very good standard. We do need a standard. Something that I found very encouraging today was that we had a good spread at the table across the, the lighting process from designers down to end users and maintenance, the people who really have to deal with what we come up with. Um, and the great thing was that we were all pretty much in agreement. 
Yeah, there's obviously there are issues with LEDs that are still unresolved, particularly to do with standards, to do with the shared vocabulary of how we talk about things and how we describe things. But we all agree on what the issues are, which I think is massively encouraging. I think actually what was very, very interesting is what a, a, a kind of harmonious um, response came out of there. I think a lot of people were really in agreement that, that there needs to be some big change in the industry, there needs to be a kind of a sea change uh, in the way that we think as designers and specifiers. Uh, it was quite interesting to, to kind of hear contemporaries um, that perhaps we don't always have an opportunity to meet with um, uh, agree, really. So I think that was quite a nice, healthy debate. So the industry certainly appears to be coming together. So light and designers, consultants, end user retailers, all, all now seem to be talking about LED, talking about it in the correct way. Um, and, and as part of that, the requirements for standard change, standard consolidation and codes is certainly gathering a pace. But it was, it was good to meet people with all feeling and talking about the same issues, but from different directions and coming together. There was a consensus uh, over the important issues, I think, the really key issues. Um, there's definitely debate around the edges, and, but more in terms of uh, where people see the industry going and how the industry is going to develop. I think about the needs of the industry, the needs of specifiers, the needs of end users and clients. Everyone seems to be fairly clear on that. One of the things I really liked about today's discussion is you're getting clients into the conversation and they can talk about the problems they are facing with getting an installation that works for them. For years as a profession we talk about how clever we are and what we think the client should have or what about what they want. So it's going to happen to us. They're going to start getting bids for lighting installations from Samsung. And Samsung don't make light fittings but they can make things that glow and if that provides enough light in the space then who will read to tell them that they're wrong. So I think we need to be aware that we're in the most exciting period in 20 years in the lighting industry and that we need to find ways around the standards to give clients what they want in terms of quality.